when you look at this from afar, what does that look like? Not, not a good thing. What up peeps? Welcome to today's vlog. What did we do this weekend? Uh, nothing. We looked at a certain <clears throat> blockbuster. Oh yeah, we looked at the blockbuster spot. We did. And talk about it more in a second, but check this out. It looks like it's more, but it's, according to the square footage, it's about triple, almost triple what we have now. It seems like so much more, but we would never run out of space in here. There's no light back here. This is just another little office. Can't really see. There you go. Just another little one. So that blockbuster space is pretty awesome. It is 5,740 square feet um, versus our current store, which is about 2,000 square feet. So it's almost triple. And uh, they do have that little back room. As you saw, there's like a little office. There's like a little break room. There's a second office. There's an employee bathroom. And then there's a customer facing bathroom. Um, if we were to get that space, we would probably put up a wall to create a much larger back room. Um, and it would probably, it would probably be about a thousand square feet for the back room, which would be awesome. We definitely need that. Um, we would reuse the countertops that are in there for our purposes. One side would be for trade-ins, one side would be for checking out, because we were actually going to do that anyway, once we move. So it's all kind of set up perfectly. Um, the only thing is all the windows we would need to cover, which is not a big deal. Um, the only issue is that... It is very expensive. Um, they want they want a lot of money for it, and uh, it was it's been it's been empty since 2014, not 2004, which is what I thought. So it's been closed for one decade instead of two, which is still kind of crazy. But um, <clears throat> we're not giving up on it. But it sounds like the owner is not going to be super negotiable with the price. So to be realistic, it's probably not going to happen. However, we are still looking to move the store, but I want to let you guys know the only reason that we've even talked about this and shown this particular spot is because it was a blockbuster. And I thought that'd be very interesting to talk about and show you guys, but any other spots that we look at, <clears throat> any other progress that we make in the beginning stages here, <clears throat> excuse me, we are going to kind of keep it under wraps. We don't want to get you guys too excited for something that maybe doesn't turn out. So uh, unless we look at another blockbuster, we're probably not going to be talking too much about it until we have something more concrete, something more set in stone. So just know that behind the scenes, we are still working on it, but you're probably not going to see any updates or hear anything about it for a few months at the earliest. So keep your eyes peeled. Make sure you're watching all the videos because eventually we will have some awesome news for you. Over our weekend, we sold 36 eBay items, I think, which is way more than normal <laughs> there's so much so all of this stuff sold on ebay we also have everything that's in here we have stuff stacked up here and then yeah she's already got some done and then these are all orders from the website as well mm -hmm. plus a few more kind of scattered so there's a lot of stuff it has been crazy working on a trade abby it's good stuff Look at all these movies. David has to get first tips. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Look at all this. 
He had stuff that wasn't movies, though, right? Mm, yeah, last time he traded stuff in. No, today I, I saw, like, a Switch game on top. Yeah, like, five items out of, like, 300. Okay, so it's mostly movies. Yes. But it, what's, I'm, what's I'm the... quite okay with mostly movies. What's the best stuff so far? Probably the Dead Alive Blu-ray. If you know, this one's really hard to get. Looks pretty awesome. It's too scary for you, though. You wouldn't watch that. Way too scary. <laughs> so in the last video, we showed you a little sneak peek of this new cabinet because Colt was working on it, and it's done now. So I finished it. Let's yeah. see it. So it's half NES and half Super NES. So like all the box stuff is up here, alphabetized, um, with some of the more expensive manuals. Same thing over here. Chrono Trigger is front facing because it's Chrono Trigger. So yeah, some manuals and then the cooler accessories. And then on these shelves, they're semi sorted by price. So up here's like the really expensive stuff and first party titles, as well as our box stuff that can't fit up here. And then down here is like our middle ground. And then at the bottom, it's like most everything under $20. And it'll be the same on the Super Nintendo side. There's more Super Nintendo games. Um, so we have these like smaller ones. And then I made like a little box shelf so that the Earthbound and Mario Paint could fit up there. It's looking beautiful. Yeah. Good job. We got something pretty cool traded in today that I wanted to show you guys. It's a perky little things. We got a couple packages in the mail today from one of our distributors. Uh, this place we get these from is called Entertainment Earth. They're a place we don't order too much from, but they always have cool figures and everything. So we got these Digimon figures here. Who are the characters again, Jess? Oh, it's TK and Padamon. They're so awesome. I'll show you one of those in here in a second because we have an open one. And then we got the Mario Kart uh, nine inch PVC painted statue. This is the collector's edition version. I'm not exactly sure what's different about this one because um, we do have the regular ones that we got a while ago. I don't know why these just came in later, but we have two of those and then this is what the other one looks like. Super adorable. If you guys are into Digimon, you should pick one up. Right, Jess? Yes. Colton's getting this gigantic DS collection that we got put out. Now that the DS games are over here underneath Super Nintendo, there's a lot more room. Yeah. Um, hopefully, it can stay this way for a bit, but if we get like a huge Super collection in or, <laughs> or something, we're screwed, so. Well, I'm sure a lot of these DS games are going to go pretty quick. This is by far the biggest selection we've ever had of DS games with their cases. Yeah. So that's going to be pretty awesome. We have the ones with, the ones that are more expensive are in here. So all of these are going to be going out into the glass case. So guys, Abby was working on that big tray with all the movies all day. Ariel had a couple large ones as well that were dropped off. Some of those have been completed, but they have not been stickered yet, so you'll see them later in the video. But for today, this is all we have to show you for the trade-ins, but there's some good stuff. Got a couple Switch games, including that perky little things. A couple new copies of some Pokemon games. We got a complete and box Karate Champ for NES, which is pretty cool. Tiny Toons, Final Fantasy Chronicles. And then normally we wouldn't lay everything out flat like this to show, but there just isn't enough. <laughs> So here you go, a couple PS5 games, pretty awesome. One Amiibo, some PS3 games here. We have a Super Game Boy. I think this came in last week, but it never got shown, along with the black Game Boy Pocket, the silver SP, and the white DSi. And then lastly, we got a gigantic Amiibo card collection traded in. There's a lot of stuff in here, as you guys may or may not know. We do have a very large selection of Animal Crossing Amiibo cards here at the store. And the girl that traded all these in, I believe, used her credit to get other cards. She had her binder with her, and I saw her going through. So I think that she's going for the complete set. And she did have some duplicates in here, like some of these cards. There were two or three of the same one, like this. So I think that these were just all of her duplicates, and she was trading them for stuff she didn't have. So... Pretty awesome. There's stuff here from all the sets, or at least up to number four, I believe. I believe they were alphabetized when I when I put them back here. But um, so yeah, lots of stuff. If you're into Amiibo cards, check out our website. But that's everything for today.
day one of this vlog is down, so I will see you guys in just a second back at the store tomorrow. And just like that, it is the next day. We're back at the store. We've got some awesome stuff today, so let's jump into it. Oh, what are you doing? I'm making an eBay listing. Oh, an eBay listing. Mm-hmm. For this card. It's like a birthday invitation. Oh, if it would load. Yeah. Oh, Dragon's Lair. Mm-hmm. That's cute. I'm looking at you, Ariel. Oh, not the camera? No. <laughs> I just looked over at the phone. I don't like it. I said no filler clips in this vlog. <laughs> What's a filler clip? It's a clip that sucks that's used to pad out the time if oh. we don't have enough clips. Well, then tell me something informative. If you guys enjoy this video, let us know in the comments because I put a lot of effort into making sure that there are no filler clips and that everything is straight to the point and entertaining. Okay, is this straight to the point and entertaining? Yes, cut. So yesterday we talked, well, in this video, but yesterday for me, I talked a little bit about that Blockbuster location that we checked out and showed you guys the footage of inside. Um, I think that I mentioned in the, one of the back offices, there was the partial Blockbuster sign, which was really, really cool to see. I wish that it had the actual front part of it that said Blockbuster. It was just like the ticket like frame or shell or whatever. I imagine if we were to rent out that space, that would probably still be there. <laughs> and then maybe we could uh, just get our own, you know, custom piece of acrylic, you know, printed and cut to finish off that sign. It'd be really cool to have a second one because one of the plans that I have um, for the store once we move, it would make a lot more sense if we actually got that Blockbuster space. But even if we didn't and we got a different space, one of my plans is to basically build a mini blockbuster inside of our new location. As you guys know, we do carry movies. Right now we're primarily just focused on horror and anime stuff. The reason for that is that we only have so much room, but once we move locations and we have room to carry other stuff, we probably will. That doesn't mean we're just going to take any random DVDs that walk through the door, but it would be nice to have at least some sort of section for the other genres of movies. But um, it'd be really awesome to build, you know, I wanna have like a half wall that kind of separates a corner of the store and that section will all be movies, music stuff. Um, we'll have our televisions maybe over there, uh, VCRs, Walkmans, anything kind of like that that fits into the music and movie you know, category will be in that section. And it'd be really cool to have our Blockbuster sign mounted right over the entrance to that area and have it lit up. Having multiple Blockbuster signs would be even cooler. So I'm um, actually wearing my Blockbuster shirt today that Abby and I got from the last Blockbuster, which is in Bend, Oregon. And uh, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not leaning towards moving to that Blockbuster because of all the, the things I talked about earlier in this video, but it's not completely off the table yet. So fingers crossed we can make it work because um, it would just be so cool. Something really awesome sold on our website this morning or late last night, I was really hoping that we would have this for the Portland Retro Gaming Expo because it would have been really awesome at our booth, but it is the Nintendo NES Mario sign. This is 1989 is the date on there. This thing is super, super awesome. It's double-sided. It is missing the, the Nintendo Seal of Quality sticker on the other side, but overall, it's in pretty good shape. This was $1,400 and it sold on the website. Luckily, we kept the shipping box that we got it in so that we can ship it out in that. Um, like I said, it would've been really cool to have for the expo, but I'm happy that it's going to an awesome home, going to one of our regulars who buys from the website all the time. So hope you enjoy it. Ryan, I wanna show you something. Okay. Come this way. Ryan. Jess already saw this. I'm scared. Jess already saw this, but now you need to see it. Oh my god. Do you love it? I do. That's awesome. Digimon. Po Masters. Po Digimon Masters. Now, now also, when you look at this from afar, yeah. what does that look like? Not not a good thing. Like Not a, a foot? Looks like a butt hole. <gasps> Ryan! It looks like a booty butt hole. That's what Colton said too. Yeah. Because the tail looks like the second leg. It does kind of look like the second leg. <laughs> that, that now you want it more. I stopped at a Goodwill on the way home from work the other day and I did not film it, but I did pick up one thing that I wanted to show you guys. And that is this Pokemon Pikachu with Pokeball coin bank. 
It is a like ceramic material. There's a little stopper. It was seven bucks. These things are pretty cool. I actually have one myself. And uh, I bought mine from Walmart like years ago. Um, 2017 is what the date says on the bottom. So pretty cool. And we're gonna sell that here in the store. Not exactly sure on a price yet. I didn't bother to look it up. I just thought seven bucks is a good deal. I'm pretty sure they were 20 new back then. Uh, there's no chips or damage or anything. So that'll be a cool little item for the store. All right, got a staff pick for you guys. For this one, uh, I choose uh, Q Billion for the original Game Boy. Uh, it is a puzzle game um, that is based around numbers. You are this little mouse and you're pushing blocks around. You can probably see it, you know, over my shoulder or whatever. Um, you're just trying to solve the puzzle and get onto the next stage. It's a very simple game, but uh, it's something I grew up with. Uh, my mom loved playing that game and I love playing it too. So if you like math or puzzles, uh, you would probably like this game if you like both. Uh, also, if you like stuff like Sudoku or Picross, um, that it might be up your alley as well. So yeah, that's that staff pick, bam. We're gonna do a before and after on this dirty A controller. Oh yeah. It's already been tested and it works. Yes, it does. And it's really gross, so let's yes. make it better. Let's see the back too. Yeah, you can like see all the gunk in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's filthy. All right, so here's the before. And now. the... Oh, you gotta do a time lapse. Oh. 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 <laughs> It's dead. It's dead. The only thing is so, that the replacement yeah. sticks we have for GameCube are gray. <laughs> yeah. It feels good. Yeah, but this one's obviously yellowed, but the the like white mm. ones. Yeah, it's more white. This like matches the gray that's on the yeah. controller itself. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Other than that C yes. stick, Ryan. Yes, it's pretty good. Um, it does have like these like really hard, like, I don't know what it is. It like reminds me of JB Weld. Like <laughs> it's just hard. It needs hard, like it's like paint almost, but it's not. That. So is that like a scratches. scratch? Yeah, that one is a scratch. Okay. It's like in the plastic itself. Okay. And I can't really clean it out because it's like in the plastic. The only other thing it. I would say is the C-stick. A little too dirty. It's kind of gross looking. You want me to swap that out? This is the original C-stick. Can it be cleaned? I cleaned it a little bit. I could try cleaning it more. Let's try a little bit more. If not, we can swap that out. And luckily the C-sticks look fine because they're just yellow. Yeah. So he did clean it up a little bit more. It's not too bad. I don't think we're going to replace it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's bad. Yeah. I'm All right. Playing this to test it, make sure it's working. Yeah. Seems to be working so far, but... We tested it when we put it in, but a customer brought it back because it froze like after an hour. Yeah. <laughs> You're not testing it for an hour, but <laughs> seems to be doing good. We did resurface it and he's just testing it again because we swapped it out with a different disc for the customer because it could have been their console. You never know. Yeah. It could. So, <laughs> seems to be working on our GameCube. But... Cool. So, we'll put this one back out. All right. Guess what time it is? That's right, it's trade time. All right. So, let's start over here. This is a mail-in trade that we got from somebody. Some pretty choice things here. Um, I, in particular, wish I could play this one. Um, I wanna say it was Vita only in America, or PSP probably. I don't remember, but pretty cool little trade. And then, this is really cool to me, just because of the, um, like, I think it was a movie. And I don't really pay attention to movie tie-in games, like, ever. So looking at older ones is always really interesting to me, especially because, you know, they were tie-ins, but they still kind of had to be, like, decent, especially after the E.T. debacle. Comment below if you know about the E.T. debacle for Atari forever ago. 
That is an interesting story. Let's get in real tight. Get these Game Boy Advance games. <sighs> Come down here. Oh yeah, Colton was telling me about this earlier. He was like, I've always found this one interesting because Abraham Lincoln uh, leads this team. I also like the Comic Sans uh, <laughs> font choice. You always gotta love a good Comic Sans. It's actually dyslexic friendly though, so. It's because of the way it's shaped. Yeah, I'm not a scientist though, so I can't really get into that. What's over here? This is the non-DX version. Please play it. Manish Kiab. Backyard football, that famous Pokemon game. Another Sonic 2 Game Gear game. Some chords. N64 games. I know what these are. Diddy Kong Racing, still my favorite racing game of all time. Nothing, nothing matches. I don't know why I'm doing such a slow pan. We gotta know, guys. What's down here? Hello? Blaster Master, blasting again. Yeah. Stuff we get in quite a bit, um, but still pretty cool. Just Dance Summer Party. Don't forget, Just Dance 3 is coming out October 2011. I know you're excited, it's next month. And then I, I kind of want to highlight this VHS here. Uh, the guy who brought it in was like actually kind of like bummed that he was trading it in, but he was like, I'm never going to watch it again. Um, so he traded it in and apparently it's just this really great cartoon that he loved. It looks pretty sick, honestly. And I've got a couple of VHS that I am never letting go of, uh, namely my The Last Unicorn VHS, unedited and everything. And this freak. All right. Thanks for trading. What's all this, Ariel? I saw that movie in the theater. I went to a premiere in Florida. How was it? So scary. Was it? How scary yeah. was it? What about this one? I don't think I watched the fourth one. What about this one? Now that is scary. That's Terrifying. Oh my god. Don't show it to me. Especially if you're a bass. Is this a current trade? Yeah, I have been in the middle of that one since it last night. What is this? Oh. Dino Riders. That looks awesome. Yeah, he uh, was torn up about it. Selling it, but he was like, it's about time. Good. Yeah. Because we need it. And who's Dino this? Riders. Is this Jared? This is, uh, yeah, Jared. Jared Michael. Wow. His friends call him JM. At least his name's not Barrett. Why would it be Barrett? Because then his friends would call him BM. Oh, white power movement. Yeah. That would be really tragic. That's really sad. Yeah. Why are you bumming me out, Ariel? So we have tags printing right now for all of these factory sealed games. These came from my collection. I've been telling you guys for a while now that I've trying I've been trying to replace games that I only have sealed copies of with complete ones, and these are some of them. The Wii games for the most part are not too special, aside from the Mario All Stars Limited Edition. There's a Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort that are both sealed in the cardboard sleeves. Then there's Final Fantasy. Uh, Crystal Chronicles, and then a couple Guitar Heroes and stuff, but nothing too special there. The NES games do not look like anything too special, but the Wheel of Fortune one, there was one sold in 2022. Before that, it was 2020. So, I don't know. Might be a little difficult to find. Maybe not the rarest title, but still kind of cool. And then for Super Nintendo, Cool World is one of the special ones, as well as Tetris and Dr. Mario. Space Invaders and Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday, then a couple like cheaper common ones. 
and these will be shown in the trading clip as well so uh next time you see them they'll all have price tags It'll flow from this colton this one's just for you oh my god it's way worse than i love the majora's mask move. Uh, i love her mouth and donald's got human eyes and teeth <laughs> Riku has a human mouth, and Kyrie's eyes are all messed up. <laughs> That's everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, this one. The the moon fits so well, yeah. aesthetically. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. Right. There we go. Amazing. Beautiful. <laughs> what you been doing today? Interviewing people. Interviewing peeps? Peeps. Because why? Because Kyle left us. No. Freaking jerk. No. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle went, is going to school and he's got a lot to handle, so we get him a little bit less than we used to. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> I know, I know. I miss him. He's only working basically like a few days a month right yeah. now, which is not really working, unfortunately. So, we got we an open position. Do I, yes, we do have an open position. And so I've been inter interviewing people. I'm about to call and schedule a bunch of interviews. Um... We're interviewing all the way until the ninth. Yes, and yeah. every time that word gets out that we're hiring, we get a lot of people that may either seriously or jokingly like, mention that, like, like, yeah, that. like that they would move here, that they would commute, or that they would they want to they want to fly out or whatever it is. Unless you're super super serious, yeah, I'm <laughs> don't be doing that it. because there's so many people trying to apply. If you live in Portland or if you live in Oregon State and you're coming into Vancouver to work into Washington State, you have to pay Portland uh, income tax, which is 25%. Oregon. Oregon income tax, which is 25%. And so it's not worth it for most people to come. Yeah, it's not worth it to live in Oregon and work in Washington. Yeah. But also, like I said, unless you're serious. Don't be contacting us because there's too many people already. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of people. I'm like booked out for interviews, like four, four plus interviews until the 9th of October. Yeah. Four a day? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Four interviews a day mm. for like the next two weeks. I know. <laughs> so something funny just happened, guys. Um, obviously, we're not going to show you any sort of security footage because it was a customer and it was a child, but um, there's a family out there and... There's a little kid. I don't know how old he is. Probably like five. Maybe younger, actually, because I think he has a binky in his mouth. But he's talking with the binky in his mouth. So he's like, eh, fine, fine. but he's like, oh, you guys have a play button. And Abby's like, yep. And he's like, how many subscribers? And she's like, 200,000. And he's like, whoa. And then he's like looking at the gumball machine. And he said something else. And then he's like, I'm going in the back. <laughs> and then he starts walking towards like the gap in the glass cases to come behind the counter. <laughs> His dad's like, no, no, no. <laughs> but it was so funny the way he's just like, I'm going in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so much confidence. And uh, Jess said that it had the same energy as the the vine where the girl's like, I'm calling the police. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> it was so funny though. And we were just all cracking up because, like, it wasn't like he asked if he could go in the back. He just like starts walking. And he's like, I'm going in the back. <laughs> it was so good. Question of the day. What is the weirdest job interview you've ever had? Mine is there was a shop that was looking for an apprentice piercer and they're like, if you can't pay for the apprenticeship, you can pay in other ways. Plus we'll beat up your boyfriend if you cheat on him. And that was it. And I was like, bye. And I never went back there again. All right. I don't, I don't, I don't have many uh, interviews, but uh, when I did my first interview for the car wash, like it wasn't even really an interview. They were just like, oh, you know how to do this? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And they're like, all right, you're hired. And that was pretty much it. Yes. <laughs> My weirdest interview was for a grocery store chain. Um, it was just a big room, like like 20 plus people all doing interviews at the same time. My interview guy was like barely paying attention to me the entire time. Um, one of my first interviews as a massage therapist, um, I was just um, interviewing with this guy who was opening his business with his wife. 
and he was just the sleaziest guy with like slicked back hair and like um, one of those button ups, but he had it buttoned down so like you could see his chest hair coming out. And he was like, yeah, do you want to like get some coffee? My mom was waiting for me. She had just dropped me off. I was like, yeah, sure. So he gets into this really nice car and I'm like, seems legit. And I get into his car with him and my mom watches in horror as we drive off to the Starbucks that's across the street. And we had the interview in the Starbucks and he was like, yeah, it's just, I think massage is pretty cool. And I'm sitting there like, I'm like 19 years old, like, maybe not this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mine's pretty tame, but it was at a pizza place and they did a group interview, which sucks. I hate group interviews. And like the lady was like, all right, if you can't get in the grease trap, leave now. And like, I was like, okay. And then at the end of the interview, they were like, if you are a fruit, what kind of fruit would you be? And that was it. Well, what, I, what? what kind of fruit would you be? I don't remember. <laughs> well, the I did not now. get hired. A pepperoni. <laughs> That's not a fruit. <laughs> I don't have an answer for that question, guys. So that is it. Let us know in the comments your story. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.